Back on August 14th, weeks ago, I heard from my sources that Matt Shackman, Shankman is Adam, so that Matt Shackman was finalizing a deal to direct Fantastic Four. And I took to Twitter and I tweeted out some teases. Why didn't I just tell you right out who it was? Well, first of all, you know, I think we're trying to be a little careful about spoiler culture. Uh, at least I am, as I've told you. And also, let's just say, the MCU got eyes on Twitter. They are watching it very closely because they want they want you to have fun when you go to the movies. And also, you know, they want to, uh, I think that they gave the trades the go-ahead to make this official, to be honest with you. Uh, because, it, again, it's, you know, I knew and then everybody else started to guess and I'm sure heard from their own sources over the past few weeks. Everybody knew. And then also, of course, you know, they want to have their big announcements, right? It's fun. You look forward to Comic-Con and D23. You want to have the big announcement the way you're supposed to. So maybe I think we might be getting at least one or two cast members at D23. I haven't heard anything about that, but my sources feel it's very likely. Uh, and now that they've allowed, Marvel has allowed the trades to publish this, they need something, they need something new. They have other stuff, but I think they'd like to have something new, Fantastic Four-y. For, uh, for D23. That panel is on Saturday, September 10th. Full coverage, of course. And I predicted that this was such a big story, it would probably leak before D23. And, you know, as I said, you know, everybody was tweeting about it eventually, and now it's finally in the trades, so we can discuss it. All right, so what we're going to talk about here is how and why Shackman was selected. I have some tea on his pitch, and then also how the Fantastic Four will most likely be introduced in the MCU, as well as what I hear is going on with the cast and my own theories. I mean, what's going on with John Krasinski? Is he coming back? All right, so let's start with Shackman, who directed all nine episodes of WandaVision. A very successful show. Emmy nominated, thank you very much. Got a lot of noms, so it's got that going for it. Um, no other, you know, that's like one of the most, I think, prestigious Disney, Marvel Disney Plus shows, even though Loki did a little bit better. Because speaking of Loki, when I tweeted out my tease, many of you very cleverly narrowed it down to two, Shackman and Kate Heron, who directed all six episodes of Loki. I like it when they have, they have one director for all of it. It seems, to, it seems I think, to work quite well, because those shows, I think, were the most, you know, uh, coherent and connected. Uh, but Loki is the most watch MC, watched MCU Disney Plus show to date. Uh, and I have to say, of these two directors, I actually would have preferred Kate Heron, who I feel has a more cinematic touch. And in some alternate universe, I do wonder what the MCU would be like if Heron hadn't walked away from it. I mean, why did she do that? I mean, I respect her choice, but we need more successful women directors in the blockbuster space. And she did so well with Loki. I mean, think of the movies she could have, the Marvel movies she could have been directing by now. Oh my God, maybe, I hope Kevin Feige calls her back someday. And I hope that she answers and says yes. All right, so anyway, on the flip side, Shackman comes from comedy. With the bulk of his directing experience prior to WandaVision on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which has its fans. I just started the new Welcome to uh, Waxham or whatever show on Hulu last night, not bad. And I was like, what's Rob uh, McElhenney's net worth? Because he was saying, I can't afford no soccer team. He's worth 50 million. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is worth 150 million, but that is some impressive Sonny in Philadelphia money. I, lo I was looking people, Charlie Day actually is only worth 30, apparent, according to the internet. And Michael Keaton, interestingly enough, and it was so funny when I asked, uh, when I asked Google, you know, on my uh, device, I said, hey, Google, I said, what, what's Michael Keaton's net worth? And they were like, oh, I can't find that out because they misheard Keaton. So they were like, this is a funny side joke. But they were like, would you like to know how much Kevin Costner's worth? And I'm like, what kind of a segue is that? I guess he's the same generation as Keaton. I did not ask about that because I had laser focus on Keaton. I forget why I wanted to look up Michael Keaton. But anyway, Michael Keaton's worth 40. So Rob McElhenney has more money than Michael Keaton. So that just goes to show you not only how, how lucrative TV is, especially when you have so many seasons and you get syndication, but also that being a movie star today is a lot more lucrative than it was back when, you know, Michael Keaton was Batman. I love that stuff. All right, so anyway. <laughs> so Shackman comes from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which should not be underestimated in its value. All right, and then he got, he got some work on some very impressive shows after that as a director, but never more than one episode, although with the exception of Game of Thrones, or thank you very much, he directed two episodes. Okay, so Shankman got the Star Trek new movie, actually, after, after WandaVision. That's how he spent his capital. 
which is currently set by Paramount for Christmas of next year, 2023. But I wouldn't be surprised if after landing Fantastic Four, Shackman drops off of Star Trek. Paramount probably would want him to. I mean, they're going to be like, hey, we, the, we signed you first to a big movie, but I mean, I think Shackman's going to try and make Marvel his home, as many a director has. Um, and I think that, you know, he just doesn't have the time to give both movies his full attention. Uh, sure, Fantastic Four is set for one year later, November 2024, but I think that they're both such big films and you have to work on them from pre-production all the way through promotion. He just doesn't have time to do both of them. He'd have to be working on them simultaneously. And I don't think either studio with brands this big would be happy with that. So how did Shackman get the gig? Well, I'm hearing Kevin Feige really liked his pitch. Yes, if you don't know, directors to get a movie have to go in and pitch to the producers and sometimes the studio if the studio is already attached, as is this case. But Kevin Feige has pretty clear you know, carte blanche over at Disney because he threatened to quit if they didn't give it to him. Um, but anyway, uh, you have to go and pitch. Every director shares their vision, haha, their vision for what they would make the movie. They go, they come in sometimes with concept art and they say, this is how I see these characters or this, this story and this is what I would want to do and this is the direction I would want to take it in. Uh, and Foggy really loved what Shackman had to say, which I hear involved being true to the source material, which isn't too surprising because we know Foggy's a purist himself, but I also heard it will be very lighthearted and also focus on exploration on that element of the Fantastic Four, which me likey, I have to say. Although I gotta tell you, I'm not a big Fantastic Four purist. And I wonder how many of those there are. Is anyone here like, no, it must be a certain way. I just kind of like the idea of the Fantastic Four. And I'm intrigued to see if anyone can make it work, as I don't think either of the two movie versions to date were a home run. Uh, and I ne I've never seen the Fantastic Four as a home run, to be honest with you, even in the comics. Uh, but they, I mean, they've been around for a long time, and there must be some reason behind that. Uh, I, basically, I think we want the Incredibles. And when you, th I mean, I was going to say that later, but I'll say it now. And everyone, when the Incredibles came out, was like, that's the Fantastic Four. And when you think of that, you're like, you know what? I think Shackman could do that, because he did a great job with Family and WandaVision. That was one of the best elements of that show. Um, and I think, you know, especially after watching the family sequence, which was so annoying in uh, She-Hulk uh, yesterday, you know, you really appreciate what, you know, the heart uh, and I think also the light touch. But yet still, there were some serious undertones to, it got very sad in the end, that Shackman was able to do. I mean, Wanda crying, who's not, who's, who's ever, that's burned in all of our, our, our brains. I was going to say subconscious, but it's right in the front in the conscience. Thank you. All right, now, my problem with WandaVision, though, from a directing standpoint, is it wasn't that cinematic. You know, it was supposed to be a sitcom when it started out, to be fair, but as the show progressed, I don't really feel it ever t truly opened up until, like, movie level, like I feel Loki was for the whole time. So I do also think, though, with this hire, that Feige, despite some complaints from fans, seems to be going in the direction that he's currently in. I think he's going to stay with a light comedic tone and style. And he's generating a lot of revenue. I mean, the bottom hasn't fallen out yet. I mean, I'm, I think the complaints come first, but he's for now barreling right ahead. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And this is actually, I think, is really good for DC because it gives them a clear alternate direction to go in to be something different, a different flavor for, for audiences. Darker, serious, and highly cinematic, right? Maybe Dan Lin should give George Miller a call again because they worked together on that potential Justice League movie back in the day if Lin takes the head of DC Films gig, which I heard from late last night from my sources. I'm going to go live with the Dan Lin conversation later today. But I heard actually last night that while it's not 100%, it's pretty strong chance he's gonna get, he's gonna take the gig. Uh, now, more evidence of Marvel continuing on their current path is who else was considered for Fantastic Four. According, according to The Hollywood Reporter, it was down to Shackman, Love and Monsters director Michael Matthews, and that was actually a pretty solid movie. In the end, it was Matthews or Shackman. So, it so sucks for, Shaq, uh, for Matthew, but I mean, maybe he's, on, he's on Marvel's radar, maybe he'll get something else. And then also, I'm very surprised to see that do a dog director, Reed Carolyn, was in the mix, which must, oh, speaking of suckiness, really sucks for Channing Tatum, who has another Marvel near miss after Gambit almost got made. Because uh, Reed Carolyn, if you don't know, is Channing Tatum's business partner. Uh, Reed Carolyn uh, started out, I believe, working for Channing Tatum, then became like his partner for the Magic Mike movies. Who starred in Dog? Channing Tatum. So that's incredible to me. So look for Michael Matthews and Reed Carolyn to show up somewhere else in the MCU. 
I mean, they're such a factory these days, they need some directors, so they're probably gonna get something. And I like both those directors, so that's good. Now, I also heard from my sources that Peyton Reed pitched again. And while, as you know, I have no faith in him as a director, I now feel kind of bad for him because he really wanted this gig. He really wanted it. Ah, man. But he can take heart that I think it's highly likely, as do my sources, that the Fantastic Four will be teased in some way at the end of Reed's Quantum Mania. As the ending of that film, no spoilers, but the ending of that film is a perfect entry point for Fantastic Four. It would be a missed opportunity not to tease them there. Plus, from what I'm hearing about that movie, it's a little soft, and I think it could really use the boost by association. It has other Easter eggs in it, but I think a nice Fantastic Four stinger on the end of it would really get a lot of people talking. I mean, I think it would be, it's just good business. Uh, and you know, if there's one thing that Marvel is good at, it's business. All right, now as for the cast, now that Marvel feels good enough about Shackman, as I said, to allow the trades to publish, Marvel has two weeks, a little bit, a little, maybe, you know, basic, uh, yeah, two weeks. They have two weeks to sew up at least one or two core cast members for the D23 presentation. Sean Chi's cast came together that quickly so they could have a nice blowout at uh, San Diego Comic-Con in 2019, you know, uh, with uh, Simu Liu showing up and then everyone else being on the board. You know, they had everyone's headshot and they were like, oh, look at this cast. So we'll see if they do something similar at D23. Will John Krasinski's photo be up there as Reed Richards once again? Uh, Krasinski's pretty booked right now. He's got a lot of other stuff he's working on, so I don't even know if he would be available to shoot a Fantastic Four movie with the timeline that they have. And I don't think he actually made that great a Reed Richards when we finally saw him in action in Multiverse of Madness. Who wants a cold and calculating John Krasinski? His whole brand is his heart. But... Multiverse of Madness made close to a billion dollars. And along with Wanda, it was the Illum... So Wanda, maybe that's another reason, I'm sure, actually, that Shackman got the gig, because he helped... Well, you know, he didn't have anything to do with uh, Multiverse of Madness, but he helped make Wanda the star that she currently is. But anyway, the Illuminati. Those cameos are also what helped blow up Multiverse of Madness. So I don't know if they're going to wa really want to totally lose that. So I don't think Krasinski will be the Reed Richards for the, for the main MCU storylines, Fantastic Four, but with variants at play, I mean, he was playing a variant in Multiverse of Madness, I suspect he'll show up again at some point as yet another non-spaghetti, hopefully less dumb version of Mr. Fantastic. I'd even like to see him again in the role, but not as the main Reed Richards. Reed Richards is so cold and calculating, you need an actor who can do that, that sometimes he borders on villain status, certainly in his marriage. Why do you think Sue keeps flirting with Namor? She knows it's wrong, but Reed is so cold. <laughs> and then also, in the Ultimate Comics line, he even was a villain. And he was a villain in Multiverse of Madness, come to think of it. Uh, to me, the Fantastic Four being about exploration, as I said, is key. And we, we've, again, we've always wanted them to be like the Incredibles itself, as I said, a take on Fantastic Four. So when you think of those two things, and then also you'd be like, why didn't Brad Bird get the job? Although Brad, I, I don't know. I don't think Brad Bird's live action directing has been as strong. Um, but is Shackman a, a good Brad Bird approximate? I gotta tell you, I think he is. I mean, that when you come to think of it, the classic qualities of WandaVision with you know the, the different sitcoms, you know, that is, that's very Brad Bird. That's very Incredibles. So I actually, you know, the more I think about it, the more, I, my only concern is it's not gonna be cinematic enough. That's my only concern. But that's a common complaint across the MCU and it's still doing fine. All right, so what do you think? And get ready for Marvel's D23 panel again on Saturday, September 10th, full coverage. Expect to see something I would think about Fantastic Four. I'll know closer to the actual uh, panel. I'll have a better idea of what they're actually going to cover. But uh, and I, I will, I will, I will tease. All right. So share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.